Hello, Michael here again, giving you another tutorial, this time on displacement maps and how to get them from ZBrush into Maya and rendered with RenderMan. Um, this can be a bit of a trick um, if you haven't done it before and you're not quite sure and you don't understand how to do it, but it's a great way to get high detail off a low poly mesh so you can actually work with it in Maya because if you've ever tried to import a high poly mesh into Maya, like this one, which is 4 million polys, you'll notice that Maya just crashes. Uh, so, getting started. What you need to do is you need to have a mesh, um, which I have. You also need to have um, have it basically a Z remesh down to a low poly count. So this one's at 16,000 as a base mesh. Um, and then I subdivided it all the way up and, um, uh, and uh, what you would call it, projected the detail from my detailed mesh onto it. If you don't know how to do that, I can do a separate, separate tutorial for that. Um, just give me a uh, comment and um, I will do it because it's pretty easy to show. Um, so yeah, and then you need to um, do a UV map uh, just with UV master off your low poly mesh, which I can also do a tutorial for if you don't know how to do that or can't find better info. And then we get to the point um, of making a displacement map. So um, I'm just going to be going through the one style of displacement map, um, which is scalar, not um, vector. Um, I've had issues with trying to do vector maps in the past, so I just kind of stick, stick with scalar because for what I'm doing, which is usually stills, it's fine. Uh, so let's have a look. So on the Z plugin, um, it, you can do it here, but I've, I've docked it to the right hand side. Uh, you want to go to multi map exporter, which is just here. Um, and when it opens, it will sort of look like this and it won't have that open. So you want to click displacement because that's what we're going to be obviously making a displacement map. And you want to do export mesh at the same time. Um, I'll explain this a little bit later, um, but if you don't do it, you kind of run into some issues. So <clears throat> first off, you want to choose what size map you want. So the higher the map resolution, uh, the, the better the detail you're going to get. A rule of thumb is if you're rendering something in 1080p, for instance, you're going to want to set your map size to at least double that. So there'd be like 2K. Um, because I may in the future, for instance, want to do a close-up of this map, uh, of this uh, model, uh, I set it a little bit higher. Uh, this model actually isn't complete, but um, I just thought I'd do this tutorial while I was sort of working through it, um, as it's got a little bit of detail on it already. So um, I've got this set to 4K. Um, you also want to make sure that you've got Flip V, um, which is flipping vertically, because ZBrush handles maps uh, upside down compared to most other programs, including Maya. Um, and the map border set to four. Um, it's just so the, the map is inset from the border of the of the UV um, image, which um, helps. All right, so we are gonna go to export options now. Um, and where is it? Down here. This is a little bit confusing to look at. Um, and yeah, so you, when you open it, it will look like this. You want to click the displacement map. And first off, subdivision level, that's telling uh, ZBrush which subdivision level to create the map from. It's the same level as whatever you uh, UV map from, which is usually your first subdivision level. Adaptive, you want this on uh, to get a little bit of detail, a little bit more detail into your maps. Um, it takes a little bit longer, but it's worth doing. Uh, D uh, DP sub picks, you don't want to ever touch. This is a legacy um, slider for ZBrush um, from the old days and it, it's not relevant anymore. Mid set to zero, this is just uh, the, the color range, um, which is not really important, don't worry about it too much. Going to Maya, just set it to zero. Uh, smooth UV, you may or may not want to use this. If you're smoothing UVs in another program, Maya for instance, then you want to select this, otherwise leave it unchecked. Uh, for me, I'm leaving it unchecked. Three channels if you're creating a TIFF um, or EXR if you're creating an EXR. So these are two different types of files, um, two different types of image files. 
three channel TIFFs are a lower quality format than EXR, but <clears throat> ER, uh, EXR is a bigger file, significantly bigger file. So um, because I'm going, going to be doing a still, um, EXR is cool. I want the, the high resolution and 32 bit, you're generally going to be working in 32 bit um, most cases nowadays, 16 bit is kind of a bit old school uh, in 2016. So unless your specific project requires it, I'd stick with 32 bit scale set to one intensity set to zero. Don't mess with that stuff. It's not relevant. Uh, and these two buttons don't matter. And the rest of that is if you're creating other maps at the same time. So if you're doing normal maps, um, you can do that. If you're doing ambient occlusion, you could work in that as well. Um, but for now, that is pretty much all you need to do. So we're gonna click Create Maps and make sure that we've got Export Mesh selected and Displacement selected as well. Uh, actually, just before I do, I wanna click Mesh Export. Um, this map is quads. Um, if you've used Decimation Master and um, um, decimated it down to a lower subdivision and then like projected onto the decimated uh, mesh, it'll be in tries. So you want to select tries. I haven't done this before, so I'm not sure how well it works, but um, subdivision level, you want that one because that's the that's the lowest resolution that we're exporting the mesh from. Um, and because this is a quad, because um, I use Z Mesher, so it's Z Mesher to quads, you want to keep it as quads um, and group, export poly groups with mesh. So um, yeah, just have that selected. If you, I, I think you need to have it selected. I haven't had it unselected, so. Um, also, I just want to quickly show you what the low subdivision of this mesh looks like. So you can see without where when we do the displacement map, you'll see that you can actually see the teeth. Um, they're going to displace them out to look like that. Um, and you'll be able to see the ridges around his mandibles as well and all the other details and stuff, obviously. Um, so going back up to create all maps under Z plugin. And I'm going to create these in my Maya project file that I've already created, which is under this. And we want to put them in the source images, uh, I guess. I think I generally put them in there. Um, what it's going to do, it's going to put the, the mesh and the displacement map in there and any other maps, obviously, as well. What I've found is if you don't have the displacement maps in the same in the project folder uh, with your Maya, uh, your Maya project, um, you will run into problems where the map won't load properly sometimes. So I find it easier just to keep a copy of everything inside that and point Maya at that as its reference. So um, I'm just going to call this base1.exr, that's fine. It's going to override it with the sub tool name as well um, and save that. And this will take a moment. So I will speed it up. Okay, so I finished drinking my coffee while that was loading, um, three minutes and one second. So it can take a little while to do it. So bear that in mind before you start it um, and make sure if your computer isn't beefy um, that you don't have any other programs running processes at the same time. Now let's jump over to Maya and um, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so you've created a Maya project. Um, you want to make sure that you save your scene, um, save it as something. Um, it just helps the file recognize where it is in the project and that it's a part of a project and that you've set a new project or that you've set the project, the scene to the project that you're working on. Did that make sense? I hope it did. Um, and then we're going to just drag our OBJ that got created into the, into the project. So I'm just going to click that base one OBJ, dump them in there. And you can see that's the EXR that it's created for the um, for the displacement map. So I'll point at that momentarily. But as you can see, we've got our guy there creeping around and out of space. And you can also see that it's the low poly mesh. Um, so you still can't see his inside teeth there. Um, but we will be able to see those really quickly. So first thing we want to do is we're going to select your mesh and go to Attribute Editor. And then up the top, click Attributes, go to Render Man and manage attributes. I'm going to assign a couple of extra attributes to it. Um, first, you want to click dis uh, trace displacement. And then also if you hold down control and click subdivision scheme and then add those. 
And if you've done it correctly, they should show on that right hand column there. And they'll also show down here, if you open that up, you want to set to Catmull Clark subdivision scheme. Um, I think this is a requirement for uh, any ZBrush models from what I've read. Um, and also you want trace displacement set to all. And then we're going to just really quickly um, give this guy a standard shader and open up the Hypershade editor. And in the Hypershade editor, we're just going to graph this, um, which is the, the shader that's applied to him. And we're going to click the, um, the displacement node, and then we're going to click uh, for displacement material here, and we're going to sign a file to it. And then we're going to get a couple of extra things coming off it. Um, so for the file, we want to open and uh, in your project, and you can see I've created a project called Displacement Tutorial, uh, in the source images, which is where the, the OBJ is, you'll get your EXR, click open. Um, and then there's a couple of things in here that you want to change. So we're going to change UV tiling to zero base, which is ZBrush. Um, and, um, and that's actually it, I think. Yeah, I think they'll pretty much render now. So let's just click IPR and see what happens. All right, so it was as simple as that. And I'll just quickly zoom in so you can see um, the teeth have actually come out of the mesh. Um, just zooming into the side of his face there because on the low poly mesh, you can see that he's basically missing his teeth. So I need it to be displaced out. Um, and you, can, you can't really see because of the light, but it's there, I swear to goodness, uh, actually. Why don't we just put a light in real quick? So yeah, as you can see, his teeth are being extruded from his face through the displacement and you're getting all that extra detail um, in his neck and his jawbone as well and uh, the middle of his tongue, etc., etc. So that's pretty much it. Um, from there, you can still apply textures um, to your UVs in the same sort of way that you normally would. Uh, you can apply a bump map over the top, top of that if you want to get some like surface um, noise and detail in there as well. You could also just do that on the displacement map itself. It just depends on um, a, a bump map is going to load a lot quick, quicker than a displacement map. So you may want to do that in conjunction with the displacement map. Um, but yeah, for now, that pretty much is it. So if you liked this tutorial, you could just go ahead and click the like button. Um, and if you subscribe to this channel, I will be posting more tutorials in the future. And if you have a request for a tutorial uh, for, for Maya or ZBrush or RenderMan, um, those are things that I know a little bit about. And if I know how to do what you're asking, I will certainly um, try to make a tutorial for you because um, it's good. Um, for more people to learn these things easier. Um, as they say, all boats rise with the tide. So yeah, um, until next time, happy rendering.